we're doing with the tribes and saying that, no, we don't want this, um, I think the better chance we have to say no to this. Um, so I am going, where am I speaking at next? Friday. I'm speaking in Columbus at the Democratic, Nebraska Democratic Convention. I will do a more detailed, detailed list on this. This is just like the cliff notes <laughs> that you just got today. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Uh, we have two more speakers, and then we're going to get to questions. Uh, Ken Winston um, and Ernie Fellows. So Ken Winston is from the Sierra Club. He'll be our last speaker. He's going to talk about the state and what the state Senate and Governor Heineman can be doing. Um, but Ernie Fellows is a landowner out from out west, and he's going to come up and talk about some of the challenges that landowners are facing and a lot of the questions that they have. Thanks. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you all here. I'm Ernie Fellows from Mills, Nebraska. That's in Kippaw County. My place is the fourth place they cross when they cross the state line coming out of South Dakota. My main concern is abandonment or when they leave this pipe off or quit using it or whatever you want to call it. This idea of pumping it full of nitrogen doesn't really get it. We think the pipe ought to be removed, just taken out of the ground. And I think that'd be a lot better deal for our future generation because if they use this pipe for 50 years and then decide to leave it, that's what we think they should do is take it out because right now we've got three pipes in the country leaking oil. We found one in uh, Salt Lake City. They hit it with a construction backhoe. It's leaking oil, leaked 10,000 gallons into the water supply. There's one in Oklahoma City that the rain washed the dirt away from the bank after a rainstorm, and the pipe was so rusty it fell open and it dumped 20,000 gallons into that river that runs through Oklahoma City down to where Edmonton, or Edmond, I think that's the right word, gets their water supply. Fortunately, it didn't get into the water because this oil is light oil and floats. And this oil coming from Canada is heavy oil and it sinks. The specific gravity of the two is a lot different. There's another leak out in California in the ocean. It's in abandoned wells. And I did not know but until the other day, but they have a group out there that does re-decommissioning of wells or re-abandonment, whatever you want to call it. They recap, it's like seven or eight wells a year that start leaking. I did not know that a well that's abandoned builds pressure and can leak oil again if the seal fails. So they redo seven to eight of them out in California every year. And we've got 23,000 of them in the Gulf of Mexico and nobody knows what they're doing. That's one of my main concerns. Another one, well, the, that pipe get back to the oil that doesn't float, the specific gravity is a lot different and you'd have to look that up and study it. I can't explain it. But heavy bitumen oil is heavier than water and it contains benzene and other cancer causing agents which also help it not float. And then another thing about this pipe, this oil is not going to come to us, it's going to China. One of the first meetings I went to two years ago this guy that represents TransCanada told me and the people at the meeting that this oil would probably go to China for them. That was two years ago. China owns or leases about 60% of the tar sands in Canada. And they're planning on taking it over there because their need is accelerating every day. In a year or two, they're going to use more oil than we are right now. They're actually buying more cars right now than we are. A lot of people don't under realize that. And then another issue that's come up is how do they clean this spill up if it goes across the aquifer? The plan that Paul referred to, I have seen briefly. I haven't had a chance to study it. It is out and it's in South Dakota and I give him a copy, so I'm hoping he goes home and studies it and then tells everybody what's going on. <laughs> TransCanada doesn't want to tell us for some reason, and why I don't know. But PHMSA says that they can pump oil in this East Pipeline for one year before they have to write an emergency plan. 
that come right out of Kansas City from the head man of the, the regulatory branch. And I about had a coronary arrest when this guy said that they can pump for a year before they have to make a plan to clean it up if it leaks. What if it leaks in the first year? And then some of the other things that we're concerned about is they have threatened us with eminent domain if we don't cooperate with them and let them, let them walk across our land and look around and make us a penance offer to buy it. And most of us have ignored them, haven't really done much since. And we're, we have a group negotiating some of that right now, but I'm not really supposed to talk about that, so I won't. But we are trying to deal with them. And then another thing that we need to do is work with our senators in this state. This state does not have any crude oil pipeline laws. We've got natural gas laws. We don't have any crude oil pipeline laws. None. Zero. We tried to pass one last year and my own senator helped kill it. She didn't even help us pass the law. I don't know what her problem is. <laughs> But we're going to bring some more stuff up this year, and we're looking for people to call their senators and say, we need to get a handle on this. It's not going to go away. He showed the maps. There's, um, last time I counted, there was over 35 pipelines that want to go through in the next 15 years. The one Altex pipeline, the guy said he was going to build it next year. He did a survey, figured up the cost, figured up the price and said it's not needed for eight or ten years. We get 20% of our oil from Canada. 8% of that is this heavy bitumen. The rest of it is a light crude oil. And if we can cut back our car use 8%, we won't even need that. Then I had an idea. I wonder how much oil we can save if everybody switched all their cars to synthetic oil. When you go to a service station, get an oil change, put in synthetic oil. Or buy a hybrid, gas electric. In a few years, I think we're going to have electric cars that are just going to amaze you. And if we go that route, we don't even need the oil that's from Canada. Well, it's not coming here anyway, it's going to China. So maybe they do. They keep trying to add national interest to this pipeline like they did to the East one. National interest means that the government and the military and President Bush, I won't say what I was going to, wanted that pipeline. That's why they got it. When you put the words national interest, then everybody, all the rules change. Us guys that own the land don't have much choice but capitulate or fight in court. And it's probably a losing battle. It's going to cost a big chunk of money. I haven't talked too much about whether I, how far I want to fight it. On that note, I thought about putting my place up for sale and using the money to fight it. I don't know where I want to do that or not. I just don't like the idea to get run over. And I read the EIS and I agree with everybody else it was seriously flawed and the EPA coming out today really justifies what I said. It has got a lot of problems and I don't know why they're doing it in such a big hurry. At one of the meetings, one of the gals chairing that EIS, is Elizabeth Orlando told me that she was unhappy she had to go through all this because it was interfering with her other work. I thought her only job at the time was to do the EIS for us by presidential order and State Department order, but evidently not. I don't want to take up too much more time because maybe people have got questions they want to ask that I can't read my own writing. <laughs> oh, right now we have 40% more pipe than we need to transport oil. And this is coming from Canada, from the Pembina Institute. You Google Pembina, and that's a good source for information for what's going on in Canada. And they'll tell you that we have 40% more pipe, and the transportation cost of pumping this oil through the pipe is what's raising the price of gas. 
and the oil companies want us to pay what they're paying in England, four and five and six dollars a gallon. And if they build this Trans Canada pipeline, you can do the math yourself. The figures will tell you that we will be paying four and five dollars a gallon for gas because they won't have enough oil to put into that pipe. So this pipe will run half empty, this pipe will run half empty, but they're going to charge the same amount and they'll pass it on to us. And all it'll do is just drive the price up. So what we can do is not burn as much gas and go to a different idea. I'd like to see everybody go to alcohol or natural gas or methane. The cars could be built to burn. Do like Brazil did a few year, uh, years and years ago, right after World War II, convert to alcohol. Just forget about the oil. The farmers don't like that theory, but they've got to have something to run their tractors, but I think we can figure that out, too. I'm going to let other people talk Thanks, so we'll have more time. Thanks. Thank you.